Things like how much you made in stocks, or paid for a new home, or earned from a home-based business. And even though everything we go over in this video may not apply to your current situation, understanding how the forms and schedules work together is the key to figuring out your taxes. Because on your own, things can get pretty confusing. Getting the forms and schedules you need is a great reason to visit your local IRS office. For these schedules and forms, the Hendersons received a bunch of documents near the end of the year that they'll need come tax time. Itemized deductions get more complicated. We'll figure out itemized deductions on Schedule A, which we'll get to later on. Many of the numbers you'll be putting down on Form 1040 come from forms and schedules that wind up attached to the 1040. Again, think of the 1040 as your, your master form. Now, if you think you're eligible for this exclusion, cover your hiney and check the IRS's instructions for Schedule D to make sure. In this section, we'll take a look at the Henderson's investments that are listed in Schedules B and D. As we mentioned before, the Hendersons also own shares in the Running of the Bulls Mutual Fund. In 1998, these shares earned them $500. How do we know this? The effect of the capital gains tax is this. The Hendersons are taxed for the profits they make from selling stocks or selling assets. For our purposes, depreciation is a method of spreading the cost of equipment used in business over the several years the equipment is in use. For tax purposes, the IRS dictates how much can be deducted as depreciation each year for various classes of equipment. Line 8 is $2,000. We get it by adding lines 6 and 7. It is the total elected cost of Section 179 property. We're down to one last expense. Other expenses, line 27. The instructions for line 27 let us know that these other expenses come from page 2 of Schedule C, line 48 in part 5. Have a look. The thing to remember is that direct expenses relate directly to costs dealing specifically with Vicky's office, while indirect expenses deal with the costs of the entire house. Line 17 covers insurance, for which Vicky paid $800. This insurance was coverage of the whole house, so it's an indirect expense. So we have $591 of allowable depreciation here in Line 40. Now, wonder of all wonders, this is the info we came down to Part 3 to get. So now we can go back to line 28 in part two. Well, believe it or not, we're done with all the preliminary work. We're ready for the final run, which means a jog through the 1040. Now let's move down to the interest you paid section. This section covers well, exactly what you'd think. With nothing else holding us back, let's get started filling out the big form, the form of all forms, the, the form, form 1040. 1040. The last thing to do with Schedule A is to add up all the deductions on the far right-hand side of the page. The deduction to the left for married filing jointly is $7,100, which is much less than the $19,916 we saw for in Schedule A. So, in line 36, we'll stick with the Schedule A value. Okay, now we got the credits to factor in. Well, that's it. No more taxes put on the Hendersons. Next section's all about payments they've already paid. Beginning with line 57, we're paying taxes.